Today's American Story with Bob Dotson takes us to the mouth of the Columbia River along the border between Washington State and Oregon. That's where one man took a stand to save a precious piece of land and ended up creating a legacy that will live on for generations to come. Trees so old, they moan. Born during the Dark Ages, before all the kings of England or France. Rex Zeke loves the ancient trees in Teal Slough. They're his neighbors. Most around his home in southwestern Washington state are gone. Clear cut for lumber. I watched the forest disappear and disappear from thousands of acres to hundreds of acres till when it finally got to a postage stamp size. These few were next. The son of a logger wanted to save them. And I realized this is it. Nobody else is gonna do anything about it, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to do something. But Bill Gordon, the man who would decide the fate of this little patch, lived in Boston, 3,000 miles away. I can't get him to come out and see the trees. What I will do is take the trees to Boston. The professional photographer lugged his camera down a logging road that had already been punched in to start the cutting. He was determined to find a picture that could persuade Gordon to halt the chainsaws. But how to get him to look? Rex agonized over the note he would send. Then measured the old cedar with a rope and mailed the cord all 38 feet to Gordon. What'd you think when you got this rope in a brown paper sack? Well, I was very suspicious because I was concerned that it could be a bomb. Here we go, Bob. Pull tight, I think it's there. But Rex hoped it would make his point. It's almost like you go to a, a store and you look at like a trousers for a large person. You hold them up and you don't need to see the person. You go, wow, this was a big man. He let the tree do the talking. No, that sure did. <laughs> that's got to tell you something. It's a huge tree, that's why. <laughs> so his company, John Hancock, sold the towering cedar and its neighbors to the Nature Conservancy. Now they will never be logged. Mr. Gordon felt about the earth as I do. When Bill Gordon retired, he left all of his company awards behind. But I did bring the rope and that photograph. As a reminder of what one man can do. The photographer was not done. He set out to change our world again. Rex hiked down to the Pacific Ocean along the last bit of trail blazed by Lewis and Clark. Along the way, he started searching through some of their journals and discovered something. No one knew exactly where Lewis and Clark first saw the Pacific. Clark drew this like a treasure map. So Rex traced their path along the Columbia River until he found it. This is like the, the summit of this tremendous expedition. The work that Rex did has led directly to the creation of the Lewis and Clark National Historical Park our newest national park. It's become a reality. Yeah. Rex's friend, Amelia Hard, worried that few would know what he did. It bugs me that when you look up Teal Slough on Google, that there's no mention of Rex, and there's no mention of Rex in the national park literature. Down in two, one, two, and down. You spend almost a decade and a half dealing with forests and the National Park Service, and you don't have much to show for it, personally. What kind of guy does this? Damn fool. <laughs> but that's how he gets people with money and power to help. You take it to a certain point. Walk it right. And then other people who live and die for having their name in the paper, they are going to see, aha, here's something here, here's something I can attach my name to. That's when Rex Zeke steps back. He believes there's no limit to what a person can do if you don't mind who gets the credit. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, with an American story at Fort Clatsop, Oregon. 
Another great story beautifully told by Bob.